Nuclear power. Safe. Efficient. Unexpectedly pretty. I've only heard one real argument against it that will make even those in the industry pause before answering. The best argument against nuclear power is that it takes too long to build and is too expensive to finance. But is that really true? Can we not afford to include nuclear in our necessary green energy transition? We, in a sense, have asked an extremely risk-averse group of people to bear the risk of an extremely uncertain investment. Hmm. That's kind of out of whack, in my opinion. It turns out that the economics of nuclear power are more complicated than the physics. Now entering the facility. Nuclear power is plagued by what I like to call not red, but green herrings. Green glowing, misleading arguments against the technology. One is nuclear waste. The other is nuclear safety. We've talked a lot about both of these if you'd like to know more. Today, however, I'd like to focus on one valid argument against nuclear power. One that I think is the last obstacle many have before supporting the technology. And that is nuclear economics. I have to admit, I haven't really looked into it because I've always been focused on the physics. Well, today let's look into it. Is nuclear power really too slow and too expensive? Or is this another green herring? At first glance, nuclear economics does seem like a problem worth exploring. Searching for articles and studies, you can easily find just as many saying that nuclear clearly isn't a pathway forward as one saying it clearly is. One side of this argument, however, might be missing something important. And forgive me here, but we're going to have to get a little wonky to understand this divide. Don't you always get wonky with everything? <laughs> no, Aria. I get bussin' with everything. Big difference. Do you even know what that means? I do not. I'm an old person now. Okay, so first of all, the framing of this argument is that when someone says nuclear is too expensive, what they mean is that it's too expensive for a green technology. Expensive when compared with wind, solar, hydro, and geothermal. This is the starting point, because nuclear is already a better option than coal. Quote, Compared to fossil fuel-based generation, nuclear plants are expected to be more affordable than coal-fired plants. So, how are green options compared? Almost every analysis uses a unit that comes from the ancient financial advisory firm, Lazard. Their measure attempts to control for as many factors as possible across the industry, so that multiple energy sources can be compared all at once. And they must think pretty highly of it, if it has its own fancy logo. The Lazard metric is called the LCOE, or the Levelized Cost of Energy. Quote, an apples to apples comparison of different technologies by accounting for factors like generation, output, upfront capital costs, fuel costs, operating maintenance expenses, and asset lifetimes. The LCOE is at the crux of the argument against nuclear power's affordability. You'll see it referenced everywhere. And it's true. When you use LCOE, nuclear doesn't look like the best green option. However, many studies will also point out that LCOE calculations do not capture many real-world costs, like how wind and solar can end up costing more than it seems when you factor in their variability. Uh, when you compare the LCOE of nuclear to renewables on face value, the first question that needs to be asked is what's included in the LCOE estimate? What the most cited metric in these arguments leaves out is the very simple fact that the sun isn't always shining and the wind isn't always blowing. And that intermittency can cost an energy grid money, especially when compared to something like a nuclear plant that is using spicy rocks to make steam almost 24 hours a day. Would those rocks actually taste spicy? Well, well I mean, I guess you could try to eat some, Ari, and see if they're spicy, but uh, you can only do that experiment once. But Kyle, if nuclear is really such a good option in our green energy transition, why don't I see more about it in my news feed I scroll through? Well, first of all, fun voice, no notes. Second of all, hey gamers, I'm award-winning science educator and rad bod, Kyle Hill. Unfortunately, discussions of nuclear power are inherently political, which means there's a lot of misinformation about it floating around there on the interwebs. Thankfully, today's sponsor, Ground News, can help. Created by a former NASA engineer, Ground News is an app and website that gathers related articles from around the world in one place so that you can compare coverage from different perspectives and see the political bias, reliability, and ownership of the sources reporting on any story. 
For example, here we see a story about a report that says that the United States is 15 years behind China when it comes to nuclear power. On Ground News, I can see that this report has been covered by more than 30 sources, and if I scroll down, I can read every article, including the original report as a primary source. I can also see that the majority of the sources reporting this are right or center-leaning publications, meaning that there is a potential blind spot for readers on the left. Ground News has an entire news feed that pulls in stories like this one that are receiving lopsided coverage so you can make sure you're not missing out on important information no matter your background. I honestly believe that in today's media landscape, Ground News is a powerful and important tool that helps you think critically about what you're reading and helps you identify the echo chambers that you might be in, 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 in. <laughs> if you want to try Ground News like me, go to the link on screen in the description, scan this QR code, and you'll get 40% off the Vantage plan, which gives you access to all of Ground News' features, including the blind spot feed. Ground News. Get real. The sun may be shining and the wind might be blowing right here right now, but more than half the time, it's not. This variability is a hidden cost, cost that once you factor it in, makes nuclear seem far more attractive. I mean, just look at those cooling towers. Look how smooth and solid and it makes a man just, oh, sorry. Sorry, I was doing it again. Let's move on. The LCOE that we've been talking about is, quote, not a complete metric of competitiveness as it lacks representation of the value provided to the system. For example, it doesn't capture the fact that wind and solar need batteries and storage, and because of this, it lowers their overall efficiency because energy storage itself isn't perfectly efficient. Storage and inefficiency add cost. LCOE also doesn't account for the battery and or fossil fuel backup systems that intermittent energy sources need if there isn't firm, smooth, solid. You're doing it again. Sorry, if there isn't so-called firm power like nuclear supporting it. The problem is further highlighted by what the industry calls the duck curve. Solar, for example, produces most of its power when the demand for electricity is at its lowest, and it produces the least amount of its power at night when the demand for it is at its highest. Batteries, storage, and other energy sources, which all cost money, are required to flatten these curves. Okay, so what happens when you do add these real-world costs in? These graphs do just that. More colored bars pointing down means the power source gets more competitive after correction, and more bars pointing up means they get less competitive. As you can see, all the changes are modest, but notice that nuclear power barely changes at all, which makes sense given that almost all of a nuclear power plant's costs are up front. More importantly though, four different combinations of wind and solar all get less competitive on average. In fact, less competitive than nuclear. When you add in the system cost, nuclear does not look uh, that far out of balance from renewable costs because all of the nuclear costs are included in the number. The renewable cost estimates are not. Unless the full cost of the technology are represented in the cost metric, it's an inaccurate comparison. We can do this another way. Instead of comparing nuclear, wind, and solar by how much money it costs per unit of energy they produce, you factor in their capacity, or what percentage of the time they are actually producing electricity, and use that to compare costs. When you do that, you find, unsurprisingly, that it would take multiples of every other kind of energy production system to match what nuclear can do, given its much, much higher capacity. It sounds to me like if I were to say nuclear power costs too much and takes too long, there are parts of that argument that aren't backed up by the data. But to give benefit of the doubt to people who say that, the nuclear industry does have to build things faster and could build things more economically. Those are problems we have to figure out, but it's not, those aren't deal breakers in and of themselves. Agreed. I agree with what he just said. Adding in the costs that LCOE leaves out, but this time considering scenarios with different mixtures of energy sources, nuclear again is not only competitive, the cost per energy produced is actually lower than a nearly 100% renewable powered future. Possibly counterintuitive, but the math checks out. Just like you were checking out those cooling towers. Hey, 
Just because they're made out of stone doesn't mean I have to be. None of this is to say that we don't need renewables like wind and solar, let me be clear, we very much do. But we need them in addition to firm energy like nuclear power because of their inherent variability, their hidden costs like battery, connection to the grid, storage, all of that junk. What I'm trying to say is that these renewables are not the silver bullets that some opposed to nuclear power make them out to be. And you know what? Let's just drop all the cost talk for a second here. I think we've lost sight of the whole reason we're talking about this. Oh. The whole reason we're arguing about this in the first place is because we want to help save the environment. We want to stop and reverse climate change, right? Well, it seems pretty obvious, at least to me, that if you get past all these green herrings, nuclear power is positioned perfectly to do this. Remember that figure we just looked at where capital costs were compared across different scenarios? Well, I want to bring your attention not to these bars again, but to these numbers, emissions. Per kilowatt hour, 100% nuclear power would produce just 12 to 22% of the emissions of the other scenarios. This matters. 12 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour? Do you know how much 12 grams is? A handful of my glorious nigh sacred hair weighs more than that. Even if nuclear wasn't that competitive, drastically lowering our CO2 emissions is worth something, isn't it? Hey. Wouldn't we all be dead if we were this close to a reactor core? Shh, Arya, just a second, I'm trying to make a point. Do you feel nauseous all of a sudden, by the way? The environment isn't just the atmosphere, either. I think we forget, or just never knew, how little land a nuclear power plant takes up, and just how much space something like a wind farm covers. Your average nuclear plant might take up 800 acres. Imagine a square with edges about a mile per side. A wind facility, on average, needs 140,000 acres of land, a square that's 14 miles on each side. It's not all that much space in a place like the United States, but it definitely is in other countries, especially in Europe, space that negatively affects the surrounding environment and its ecosystem, just like any other human-made anything. But Kyle, you're probably thinking. Okay, maybe nuclear power is more competitive than I thought, but we're like two hours into this video and you haven't talked about how long it takes to build nuclear power plants yet, mate. First of all, that's a damn good Australian accent. Second of all, that's because this is the most straightforward part of this argument. In places like China and Korea and France and Japan, nuclear power plants do not take that long to build. The mean time to build a plant around the world as of 2023 was only seven and a half years. Not an extreme figure like 40 years, an argument you'll hear that is using statistics in bad faith. In Japan, a nuclear power plant can take as little as three years to build, as fast as a fossil fuel plant. The United States is different, as critics point out, but that's because the United States has many, many more regulatory and licensing procedures as compared to other countries. This inevitably increases both timelines and costs. Like we see data centers that are interested. We see venture capitalists that are interested. We see um, uh, the Dow project. I mean, we see entities who are interested. They have a different level of risk aversion right. than, than your local utility. They're just different creatures. They're different firms. They have different incentives. Incentives that allow them to take on a level of risk that others wouldn't. And so I actually believe that what we're gonna see is the first movers are actually, in my opinion, going to be those entities who can shoulder a larger amount of risk, who, who who have an appetite for risk. We have the private sector just waiting to invest in nuclear here. We just got to figure out how to make them, how to make it possible for them to do that. Yeah, that's just that's just basic economics right there. That's just basic economics. I, I mean, until we get that right, we're not going to see a whole lot of orders happening. Again, to be clear, we do need wind and solar and hydro and geothermal and hamster wheel power. All the renewables we can get our hands on, but we need nuclear too. It's safe, it's efficient, it has a smaller footprint than you realize, and it's faster to build than you think when the regulations make sense, regulations that we could easily change. 
We've spent so much time on this today because I know this is the argument that is keeping many of you from supporting or at least just considering this technology. So hopefully this wasn't all too wonky and now you have all the information you could possibly need. Until next time. Yeah, big nuclear? Yeah, no, I said all this stuff. Yep, mm-hmm. Yeah, just make the checkout to Lamborghini at Kyle Hill. Dot um, yeah, I'll have to call. I, 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 I was just subscribing to some magazines. I would never. Look, let's talk about those cooling towers again. Oh! <laughs> now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff here at the facility for the direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky white lab coat, get videos early, join our private members only Discord, get private live streams once a month with me and my face, go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill or whatever link is on the screen right now and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, as you can see, you get your name in every single video showing how much I love you. And look, there's hundreds and hundreds. <laughs> How could I possibly pass this? One thing that is, I didn't include in any of this discussion of economics is another argument in bad faith in my mind where detractors from nuclear power will say, well, we have to add in the cost of potential disasters. When they factor in something like the cleanup of Chernobyl, which never got finished, or the cleanup of Fukushima, which is ongoing, it could be hundreds of billions of dollars. But given that this has only happened twice, it would be like requiring every skyscraper to have in its initial startup costs some sort of asteroid impact cleanup licensing regulation something. It is so unlikely that to argue that the costs need to be baked into every single one of these, of which we have very many operating today that have been operating for decades, it just doesn't, it's, it's arguing in bad faith. It, it's adding in this fear unnecessarily, which is making nuclear seem less competitive than it actually is. Thanks for watching. Yeah, yeah, make it an Aventador. What's that? This isn't Lamborghini? This is the meat store? Huh.